Jeff and I. Uh, we're off on a trip here today. Left, uh, left Guelph about 5 o'clock this morning. It's rained heavily the whole way. Uh, we're just heading up Dino Road right now and finally the sky is clearing. We're probably about 20 minutes from our destination. So all between um, the, the, the famous Bear Lake property, which is now sadly close to Rock Hounds, and um, Torrey Hill itself, it's all a fantastic area filled with these, uh, you know, calcite fissures that are tapped. And uh, in particular today, um, I'm going to kind of explore, you know, some areas a little further afield from the Gibson property that we've been visiting quite a bit as of recent. And uh, just see what else there is in terms of these fissures. Um, and hopefully show you something a little new and unique. Okay, uh, Tory Hill. That away. Here we are, beginning of the Gibson property. I have been advised by my colleague that we should drive all the way up. So I'm sincerely hoping we don't have a repeat of that winter, winter experience where uh, the car went, uh, got bottomed out in that washout. Let's see what uh, fortune brings us here. Kind of beautiful though. Single lane, mind you. Likely to collapse off to the side here and we go rolling down into the ditch. Oh well, let's see what happens. I mean, just really a hillside. Who's know exactly where to dig, but you can see all of the furrows. You can see the kind of the, the surface expression of these trenches that have worn away beneath. So I guess you just pick one and uh, have a go at it and see what it reveals. Floor Richterite is the big, uh, big thing to find around here. So I mean, I'm going to probe around this area, just see what's jumping out at me in terms of a significantly sized one. So I know the bigger the fissure, the more likely I am to find some decent crystal. I'm just digging through all of the sort of debris that's left scattered along the edge here. And I'm going to extend this as well, by the way, and have a look what else I can find. But just the leftovers themselves buried around here are in themselves worthy of collection. I mean, there's your classic pyroxene shape. Look at that basically just a prism with square edges here at the end of my arm this is one I'd call a keeper just laying here being tipped over you know obviously everything laying face down pretty well that mound in front of the ridge there that mound in front of the fissure it's all pretty well stuff that's been scooped out um, so I mean nice find it really is the size of these feldspar crystals is just stunning and they are easily extractable. Um, God only knows what, what you get when you continue along that ridge face there. Um, this is indeed a find. I mean, obviously, there's the easier deposit just back that way, not too far. Let's walk along the hill just a little bit further and you just find this mind-blowing spot. Um, I'm going to dig and just uh, maybe I'll spend the next two or three days here. Easy pickings, guys. Look at that. Lovely feldspar again. So in fairness to my good friend Jeff, I've decided to let him into the secret. Uh, he's up here. He's finding some good titanites. Hold out your best one there, brother. Maybe two or three of them so we can have a look at what you found. That's quite nice. Very nice. What else? And I'm going to suggest to him that he comes with me now. You into it? Go in there 10 minutes. Okay, I'll wait for you. Silent Jeff. <laughs> Too much work, man. Somebody pillaged my hole. Jeff, I think where I are you finding all these titanites here, buddy? Down what area? Tree. Underneath this tree? In the tree roots. Go with it. There we go, guys. Jeff's secret titanite uh, stash underneath here. Here's a weird, weird freak occurrence. I'm just coming down after seeing Jeff's titanites. And I don't usually find much titanite, and there's a whole, like, look at this, solid titanites. Just a massive cluster of titanite crystals. <laughs> He's been digging all day, man. I better not show this to him. He's going to be a little upset. You'll know the titanite quite easily by a couple of things. One of it being its kind of shovel nose snout to the edge of the crystal, as you can see up there. And also, it's got a super high luster. Um, in other words, how much it reflects the light, as you can see 
right there. Uh, when it's a, a transparent crystal, it has a very, very high double refraction. In other words, it breaks the light rays. Uh, it splits a, a light ray into two separate rays. That is just a killer hill. Gotta catch my breath. <laughs> I'm out of shape. Look at this one, guys. Look at this. Massive feldspar. Pyroxenite. Good. That's gonna be easy. How you get her out? Whoa! Turn it over. It's not bad. It's not a really cool. Just so sort of lying in the dirt after I'd been hammering away, it just kind of popped out of the wall. I found a cavity here. Pretty cool. Just inside this, behind the feldspar, I was trying to remove this piece of feldspar and the back popped out and there's a pretty cool cavity with crystals in it. Look at this bad boy just come out. Careful, careful levering. Um, this, basically this area, it's just pocked with cavities and inside each cavity, the entire walls of the cavity are nothing but beautiful crystals and if we're lucky within the cavity at the bottom we might find a free floater which will be doubly terminated it's not too common though right now but we're mainly looking at feldspar and fluorectorite in this particular area Look at that for big feldspar crystals that's beautiful but I mean trying to extract that without damaging them not likely so we have a fair bit of um, interaction with the uh, fluorectorite in this area and <clears throat> Fluorectorite, it's an amphibole, and by an amphibole, um, one of the distinctive properties of the amphibole is that it is a monoclinic crystal, meaning that it has, if you can imagine two axes crossing a C axis, those axes, one of them is inclined um, in relation to that C axis. So the top of the per, uh, the top of the prism and the bottom of the prism usually reflect that property of being inclined in some way. Now it wasn't until uh, its discovery in the Urals that um, there was even known to be such a thing as fluorectorite, and in 1994 it was recognised as its own distinctive um, mineral species or, or type of mineral. Um, there are only three locations known across the world, three general areas where the fluorectorite is found. And this particular area around Wilberforce is one of them. Two spots that are particularly well known, the Essenville Road Cut, where you're finding these very slender crystals, um, and also the area around Titanite Hill. And uh, there was actually one location, which in 2003, I believe it was, um, uh, True North uh, Gems, I believe, uh, explorers from True North Gems found this a very large um, seam of fluorectorite and uh, it made itself known at the uh, Peterborough Gem and Mineral Show, which is where the area first came to light really as a fluorectorite location. So this is an example of what you find at the Essenville Road Cut. It's a very slim, like a slender kind of crystal, like it's quite wide, but end on very slim. Uh, it's found in a crystalline limestone that is encased as a lens within Nice and typically the rectorite is going to be found uh, in cases where uh, the, the limestone has been altered uh, by heat, metamorphosized, metamorphosed, excuse me. Now as we head up to uh, Titanite Hill you're going to get a nice blocky looking specimen of um, fluorectorite again questionable. Some, some will say, well, how do you know it's fluorectorite? Uh, it needs lab examination. Well, I'm just repeating what I understand. I don't know of its exact composition, but it's definitely been said by many to be fluorectorite, the same kind of stuff as you find it at Essenville, but way more blocky. And again, without question, it is an amphibole. So side by side, you can see the, the two distinctive areas with its fluorectorites. There's up top, what you find generally around the Titanite Hill area and down below what you find at Essenville. 
pretty hard to extract at Essenville. One of the unique features is that it's a, a lot of these are, are coated by gothite and as a result it gives them uh, an iridescent sheen. So the chemical formula, and you'll see it here on the screen. Um, when, when, the, when the fluorine, fluoride, fluorine is dominant over the OH, we're talking fluororectorite. Now when you see, you can see the magnesium part of this uh, formula, when the iron replaces the magnesium, it becomes a ferrorectorite. So that's kind of the difference. But again, can you tell with your own eye? Mm, not necessarily. Requires a, you know, generally like a lab analysis to, to figure that kind of stuff out. Just go with the idea it's an amphibole. So as I say, no shortage of fills for here. All sorts of crystals. This is the dig site for the day. But you can just see kind of all along here. Um, also in this direction, just kind of follow the furrow. You pretty well know the same kind of mineral things going on. Don't doubt that if you go a little further down, you're probably likely to tap into more. We were just kind of going along. You know, if you're looking for fluororectorite, this is absolutely the place to go. Just even the cast-offs are, are quite amazing. There's another rock hound down there. I don't know who it was. Never went down to look. I really kind of wish I had now. You might recall from a previous video I did on um, on the Gibson property that had this idea about uh, kind of the minerals just kind of settling with gravity over millions of years and the soil almost being like water. And basically when they when they hit a hard surface, I was saying a lot of times the titanites seem to settle on the ledge as well. Here's a perfect example of a funnel. And this is a smooth, smooth calcite and it funnels downwards, right? And so you think any minerals that drop out will hit the funnel and over millions of years just keep sliding down, down deeper into the hole. Well, there's a hole there and I can feel that it drops off right there just like that, right? So I put my hand down, what a hole out. But that, that's an appetite. I know it's covered in mud and so forth and it's busted off at the end. But, uh, you know, that's an example of what settles down on the hole. Heavy as can be, way heavier than the soil. I can't wait to clean it up and see how it looks. So here's another huge crystal, not sure what kind it is, I gotta clean it up, have a look. So much mud I can't even tell what color it is. Uh, obviously a blending of two different types. It's down from the bottom of my little pocket there that I'm digging into the funnel, I guess I'll call it, right? And I'm digging with the hands here. Um, it's so muddy, you can't even see what's, what's crystal and what's not, so I just squish through the mud, and if it's a smooth face, it's a crystal face. Uh, or possibly a cleavage face, most more likely a crystal face in this particular case. And um, if it's rough, it's probably corroded calcite and I just over the shoulder with it. Eventually you gotta put a stop to it, I'm afraid. Ah, sun's, sun's getting low. Um, I gotta do a bit of stuff, do a bit of shopping here before I finish off for the day. So I guess I better head off. I'm gonna leave a good proportion of what I've gathered here. Um, I only just take a couple of select crystals usually. So, I mean, the next rock hound to come, it's there. And uh, obviously, after good rain, I guarantee I've chucked a bunch over my shoulder because they felt gritty. But at this point, everything feels gritty. I'm still loving this one, man. It's just so beautiful and lustrous and transparent. Um, that's, I think, probably the, the thing I like the most, even though it's just appetite today. I think that's the one I like the most. Here's the reward. A hard day of digging. Oh, I'm parched. Kind of get dehydrated because I forget to eat and I forget to drink. I just keep working in the hole. I was going to say, if you find my yellow crowbar, can you give it back, please? Uh, but there it is. I'm walking back, just following my trail, and thank goodness it's laying right there. Must have dropped off my backpack. That was just such a great day of rock hounding, I must admit. Came back to yesterday's spot. And uh, I exploited that little fissure, as I call it, the funnel. And I've been very successful. But as I say, there it remains open for the next rock hound to come and help themselves. Hey, this is Moxham. Finding the good today, Moxham? Everything good. Lots right of on, brother. <laughs> I got a couple hunks of tight night here. Cool, cool. You want to ride back to the... I oh, know, I'm walking. Yeah? I'm great. Okay. Thank you, though. 
look at this, eh? What beautiful evening, afternoon, whatever you want to call it. Wow. Scavengers will be prosecuted. That includes you, Jeff. Sometimes you see bears here, eh? The dump, the dump guy says uh, there may be a bear around the corner here and they just kind of help themselves. Ah, let's see. Ah, what a downer. No bears. Apparently if you come back in the evening you're guaranteed to see bears. Apparently they're really open to just uh, anybody coming and checking out the bears. He says some days they're here, some days they're not. So I'm going to get a California Red here for my sister. The guy follows me around with a broom sweeping up as I walk past. Ah, oh, you missed him. He was just out here tipping out his dustpan.